Y'all hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. I have to tell y'all what just happened. So I was all set up outside. It, well, it was a lovely afternoon here in the Northland. So I thought we would take advantage of this last little bit of nice weather before the snow comes, cause it's supposed to snow this weekend. So I thought we'd sit outside, have a little chat, drink a little tea, then it started to rain. So I had absolutely no plan for an inside setup. So here we are, I'm scrambling a bit, but that's all right, we're all friends. So here's what I'd like to do y'all. I've had some questions about which Kindle is my favorite. So here's what I'd like to do. Let me get my Kindles all set up. Let me go grab my tea. Cause like I said, I was ready to sit outside. So let me get all of that together. While I do that, y'all go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I'll get all of my junk together. I'll be right back and then we can talk about these Kindles. All right, y'all, let's get into this. As I mentioned, I've been asked a few times which Kindle is my favorite. So here's what I wanna do. Let's go through and talk about all of the Kindles that you can get now, what I think about them, and then I'll rank them in order. But I think as I talk about them, you'll be able to figure out sort of which ones I like more than others. But I just wanna talk about just a little sort of brief overview of each of the Kindles because I've done in-depth conversations about each device and I'll link them either below or up above. I'm not sure what's going where, but I will link them here. And while we're at it, y'all, I got a suggestion from a member of the Fit family that I need to be linking stuff in my description. Like when I talk about something, I need to drop a link to it. Like not just talk about books in a conversation, drop links to the books. So I will start doing that moving forward. I have affiliate links on Amazon. So any links that you see from me in my descriptions, just uh, unless I say otherwise, assume that they're affiliate links, especially if it's an Amazon link, okay? And I'll try to remember to say that as often as possible, but I have a feeling you're gonna get tired of hearing it. But I will drop links to my videos in the description and I'll put affiliate links to each of these, well, to the devices that I can link to. And I'll explain that when we get there, but let's jump in and talk about these devices, starting with the least expensive one. Now this is the sort of entry level Kindle. It's the base model Kindle. You can get it for $99, a hundred bucks, but if you watch for it and you know that this is the one that you want to get, wait for it to go on sale. I can't guarantee, I mean, I'm not Amazon, but we can probably expect to see all of these that Amazon carries in their sort of actual like everyday Kindle lineup. We can expect them to go on sale for Black Friday. We just saw great prices on Prime Day. So Prime Day, Black Friday, really any excuse that Amazon can find to get a Kindle in your hand, they're going to take it and reduce the prices of the Kindles because y'all, we shop for reduced price Kindle books on this channel. We talk about them a lot. We talk about where to get them. We talk about Stuff Your Kindle Day, which BT Dub, Stuff Your Kindle Day is coming up again on, I think it's December 27th. So we'll make a big to-do about that again. But just bear in mind that Amazon makes money, I mean, other than like the 99 cent books that we're buying, Amazon makes money when you buy an ebook to read on your Kindle. So I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, correct me in the chat. And y'all don't judge me based on what's on my Kindle. These are ads, that's not the book I'm reading. I'm reading a different trashy book on this Kindle. But I feel like to Amazon, selling you a Kindle at a cheap price is kind of a loss leader because they know once they get this device in your hands, you're gonna buy a bunch of books to read on it because they're that good. But anyway, I digress. I am already way off topic. This is why we're not doing reviews in this video because it'll go on forever. So $99 base model Kindle. You can often get it for as cheap as like $70. And y'all, this is a good little device. Now it's small. The screen is six inches, but it's a good little screen. Like I said, you're... Y'all know me. You're gonna know what I think about each of these devices just from the conversation. So you'll probably be able to guess my ranking before the end of the video, but I like this device a lot. I think it's a great device for somebody who either doesn't already have a Kindle 
or just wants a small, compact, throw in your pocket, throw in your purse device. I keep this one on the Peloton bike and I read, I almost said ride on it. I don't ride on this Kindle. I read on the Kindle while I'm riding on the Peloton because it fits perfectly on the little tray that I have on there and I can hold it easily in my hand. Now, I'm like, five three ish i am a female so you can kind of like gauge the size of my hand or the size of the device with the size of my hand and i have i think it was michelle that recommended these loops instead of i have loops and i have what are these pop sockets i have loops and pop sockets on various of my kindles i like the loops i like the pop sockets too but i have a loop on this one and i just like i said i read on it when i'm riding on the peloton and this stays out there all the time one thing that i like about this device and y'all all of my devices are in i'm looking to make sure before i say this but i know this to be true all of my devices are in cases and I'm just not gonna take them out for this conversation. Cause for one thing, look, I have little pictures in there and I just don't wanna mess with it. But y'all know what Kindles look like out of the cases. There is one that I might take out of a case, but we'll get there when we get there. But so just know that this is Kindle and case. This is in a little, most of them are in these little like thin, can you, is that focusing? These little thin plastic cases. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, one thing that I like about this device is something that I think that some people might consider like a detractor or a negative is that it's really light. This is just a little plastic case. And like I said, I use it when I'm riding on the Peloton and y'all, I, though I'm sitting there and all I'm doing is pedaling, I don't want any more weight in my hand than I have to have. And this is just a light little device. So as I mentioned, I think it's great for throwing in your purse, throwing in your pocket, except caveat, it is not waterproof. So this is not my everyday driver. This is not, it's generally not, well, actually no. It is not my grab and go in the car because one time I did grab it and go in the car and I ended up dripping something on it. It got, it just happened to get wet at the exact right, wrong spot. And I thought I'd killed it. Well, it ended up drying out, but y'all, this little guy is not waterproof. So don't take it in the drink unless you're really, really careful, or maybe put it in a Ziploc bag or something, but protect it from water. So it's not waterproof. Um, what else do I want to say about this one? Oh, you can see that I, can you see that this is the blue denim one? You can see the blue around it. Sorry, I maybe should take it out of the case, but so it's blue on the back and the front. Keep that in mind. I think that's super cute. What else? Oh, we're not doing a review of this thing, so I'm not going to give you all the deets. I've done all the details in other videos, so you can find those out there. You can find them in the description. So I do like this machine, especially maybe as a gift for somebody who doesn't already have a Kindle and you think that they'll like one, but you don't want to go for like the big Mac Daddy and spend a couple hundred dollars on it lest they don't like it. This is a great starter Kindle, especially if you get it on Black Friday, Prime Day, some kind of discount. And often, this is sort of away from the first time Kindle thing, often you can get a trade-in. So if you send in your like pre-existing Kindle, you can get a discount on the Kindle that you're buying and you can often get whatever machine, whatever Kindle you're getting with three months of Kindle Unlimited. So bonus. Anyway, so that's the little bitty $100 entry level Kindle. Let me set that aside and let's jump up to the next price point, which is the paper white. And this one is like $140 ish. And I say ish for a couple of reasons. One, there are different configurations of this device. So you can get like different levels of memory on it, pay more for that. And you can often get it on sale. So you pay less when it's on sale, obviously, and you pay more for more memory. So the regular paper white is 140. And then there's a signature edition that's like 180-ish. And that one's got some additional features. It's got more memory, just stock. And that one I believe has Qi charging. So it's got like the wireless charger and you just set it on a thing. Now, here's why I don't know if that's the case or not. This is a signature edition but I have a pop socket on it, so I'm not wirelessly charging nothing. So did I mention that the little guy has a six inch screen? 
This is 6.7 inches, but I think I did not say this. The little guy, this guy, all of them except for a couple of exceptions, and we'll talk about the exceptions, all have the same, is it software? The same bit that drives them. So the menus are the same, the books look the same on them. So this is the little guy, the blue one, right? The $100 Kindle is going to be the same reading experience as far as your interaction with the book as the paper white. Paperwhite's bigger. It's a 6.7 inch screen versus a 6 inch screen, but they're both 300 PPI. This one is waterproof, which bonus. Y'all, I take this in the bathtub. I will take it. This is my daily driver. I take it all the places. I throw it in my purse. If I'm going to the Walmart to pick up, y'all have probably seen this. When I go to the Walmart to pick up groceries, I will sit there and read a couple of pages. Now, yes, I could read on my phone. Y'all, I don't read on phones. I don't read on iPads anymore unless like it is a dire situation and I've completely forgotten to bring any e-reader with me, then I'll break down and read on a phone, but I'll throw this in my purse or I often, <laughs> often have an actual purse Kindle that I just leave in my purse. The only reason I don't do that is because I feel like it might get sad and lonely sitting in my purse all the time. So I'll take it out and read on it and forget to put it back in my purse. But this is my daily driver. It's rugged. I feel like it's got, it feels a little more substantial than the smaller one. And you can see the screen is flush, right? The bezel is flush with the screen. So that's like bezel right there. And then the screen is right here. On the $100 one, there's a little bit of a lip. Now we've talked about this on other e-readers on the Nook. Not the new Nook, but the older Nook Glow Light. Y'all, that drove me bananas. So I think it must be like more of a difference on the Nook than it is on the Kindle. Either that or the way that the software is developed. Things don't come up that close to the edge on the Kindle because this doesn't really bug me like it does on the Nook, but it's really nice not to have it on the paper white. So paper white is a completely flush six and a half inch, nope, sorry, 6.7 inch reading screen. It's waterproof. Oh, this bugs the snot out of me. This is dumb. It's first world princess problems, but you see how the front of this one is blue? See how the front of this one is black? This is the green, it's the agave green. I think this is the agave green. Can Oh, you can't really see it because of all my pictures. See that green right there? That's the color of the candle. So it's agave green, but the front is black. Bugs the snot out of me. And y'all, I know that that's a silly little thing, but I don't want the back of my candle to be the color. I want the front of my candle to be the color so that when I'm reading a book, I see the color. It's silly, it's dumb, it bugs me didn't keep me from buying this and another one of these to have in the bed when I read at night and one to have in my office, but it still bugs me. The other ones I don't think are different colors, but anyway. I like this device a lot. I don't know, maybe y'all ask me again in the comments if you care and I'll actually think about this. I don't know how much I've thought about this, honestly. But I don't know if I think that the signature edition, for me anyway, I don't know if I think that it's worth the additional $40 because we've talked about this a bazillion times. I, I've never run out of memory on a Kindle. It's never been an issue for me. I've never had to delete a book to download a book. So the additional memory on this machine is not an issue for me. I can't charge it, like I can't use the wireless charging because <laughs> I have a pop socket right where I, I'm pretty sure the charger is. Plus, I it goes forever, it's Kindle, and I just plug it in, it's USB-C, so I just plug it in every once in a while and then it goes forever again. So the upgrades between this and the other paper white, I'm not sure I think are worth it. The reason that I, so you're, I know you're like, the, Why'd you buy it, ding dong? Because at the time that I got this, you had to get the signature to get the green one. I know. I'm going to give y'all a second to judge me while I drink some tea. Oh, 
All right, now let's move on. That's good tea, by the way. This is um, Boulder Breakfast Blend, which I should not be drinking now because it's the middle of the afternoon. And we have a, we, air quotes, have a rule in the house we're only allowed to drink a certain amount of coffee a day because once we drink more than that amount of coffee, our partner, the intern, starts saying things like, how much coffee have you had today? And are you hearing colors? Because you seem to be a little like this. And Boulder Breakfast Tea has as much caffeine as coffee, but the intern never says, how much coffee and tea have you had today? So we're riding a little dirty. Y'all don't tell the intern. Anyway, let's get on with this. Paper white, love it. This is my daily driver. Now, let's get into some more sort of luxury Kindles. And I'm not really sure the order in which to do this, so I'm just gonna jump and talk about, y'all, if you know, you know. This is The Voyage. I had no idea this thing even existed until a viewer mentioned it in the comments and I was like, what is this you say? I love this thing. So we're gonna talk about this and then we're gonna talk about the Oasis and it is almost impossible not to compare them. The Oasis replaced the Voyage in the Kindle lineup. And y'all, this thing is absolutely beautiful. Now, I don't know what I said in my intro because I was gonna say something about Kindles that you can get now, but you can't, You. you Amazon no longer sells or supports the Voyage and this is, one, I am gonna take this out of the case because somebody asked me a question the other day in the comments about the shape of the Nook, the new Nook glow light, and I hadn't addressed the shape of the back of the device, which was just flat, but it was a really good point because the shape of the back of this device is so not flat. It's kind of, I don't even know how to describe it, but like the edges are slanty. Can you see how the, um, can you see how the edges slant? I'm trying to get it to focus. I don't know if it will. But the edges are all slanted, and then this bit is flat. It feels good to me in my hand, but somebody made a comment when I did a glowing review of this device that the shape of the back, she just couldn't get down with the shape of the back of the thing and ended up sending it back. And I think it was like way back in the day when these first came out when you actually could send them back. But now you can get them, they're aftermarket all over the place. You can get them on eBay. I think I got this one. I, I paid a dollar or two more than I probably should have. I think I spent maybe 60 bucks for this one. I know I said all of that in my review which is linked in the description, of course. So what's the big deal about this device? Why am I even including it in the conversation if Amazon doesn't sell them, Amazon no longer supports them, they don't update the software. So when we were talking about the experience of reading on the paper white and the little Kindle being the same and a little different from some of the others, this is one of the others, y'all. This is the old software on this device. Here's the deal. This, to me, I believe this is a luxury reader. It's got a beautiful screen. It's 300 PPI, which back in the day that this came out, that was unheard of. And it's got both on-screen controls, so you can turn pages either on the screen by flipping as normal, or with, there are, you, I know you can't see them, but there are little page turn buttons, buttons. There are little areas on here that you can mash and turn the pages. It has audio. It has a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, so you can plug in and listen to audiobooks if you want to. And y'all, the power switch is on the back, which if you have a paper white or one of the regular Kindles, you know why I'm mentioning that. And I forgot to tell you that a huge complaint that people have with these two devices is that the power switch is on the bottom which doesn't bother me because you can see that it's recessed in this case. So it doesn't bother me, but when you hold it like everybody holds a Kindle, your finger is right on that power button. So inevitably you're gonna close down your book multiple times while you're reading. Well, the Voyage doesn't do that because the power button's on the back. So this is a great luxury e-reader at a low price. Like I said, I think I got mine for 60 or 70 bucks all in on eBay 
and I'm thrilled with it. And of course, when you buy things on eBay, it's a little hit or miss, but I'm very happy with this device. And for a luxury e-reader with page turn buttons, I can't complain. So that's the Voyage. I just wanted to sort of touch on it. I don't want to spend much time on it because like I said, you can't buy it through Amazon. It's not supported, but I like it. And I feel like it's got a bit of a cult following and y'all, I'm part of the cult. So the Voyage, if you're interested in a luxury e-reader and you don't want to spend the $250 that it's going to cost you to get into the Oasis, maybe think about that one. And with that graceful segue, let's talk about the Oasis. Y'all, this is a luxury e-reader. So the Oasis, you'll notice that the other Kindles are rectangular. This one's a little squarish, which I just find interesting. It's also got this little bump out in the back. So when you hold it, y'all, I can't explain it. And if you know, you know, and if you've held one, I think you get it. It kind of feels like a book in your hand because you know how when you're reading a book, other than, you know, for the two pages right in the middle, it's always asymmetrical when you're holding a book. And this just feels like that. It just gives you that feel of holding a book. So you've got that sort of asymmetrical, I don't know if it's ergonomically pleasing. Is that even a word? Um, but I just, I like it. It's got page turn buttons. Unlike the Voyage that has buttons on both sides, the Oasis has buttons on one side, but when you turn the device, it reorients it to be right side up. So if you want to turn pages with your right hand, you turn it this way. But then if you want to turn pages with your left hand, you turn it this way. Sounds silly, I know, but it's just really nice. And frankly, I would expect that in a luxury e-reader with an entry price of $250. Did we mention the screen? It's got a lovely seven inch display. It's got more light than the paper white and the entry level Kindle. So the light that you see on the screen is more evenly distributed. And y'all, it's just a really nice reading experience. Sorry, I feel like I'm starting to like get into more details of the devices and I really don't want to because we've talked about all of that before. And I don't want to spend an hour here talking about all these devices. I want to just introduce them, talk about them for a minute and then get to what I like and what I don't. So that's the Oasis. Now, let's talk about the big daddy, the Scribe. This is Amazon's foray into the world of e-writers or e-ink, like e-ink writing tablets. It is a fully functioning Kindle with a stylus, which you gotta buy separately, that you can use to write on the device. Now, you can't take notes in your books, but you can download PDFs, you can make notes, and I've said this in other videos, the software that supports the note-taking capabilities of the Scribe has come a long way since they first introduced this device. What's it been a year ago now? So the entry price point for the Scribe is $340. And y'all, you can see it's a big old screen. It's just over 10 inches. It's 10.2 inches and it's heavy. There's a lot of real estate there. It's girthy y'all. And I don't know, do we, t so we talked about waterproofness. The little Kindle is not waterproof. The paper white is waterproof. The Oasis is waterproof. The Scribe is not waterproof, which y'all, I don't know that I would take this in the drink. Like it's just awkward to hold. So I, I really don't think that I would take it in the bathtub, but it annoys me that I don't have the option to do so. And like just now when I was outside and it started raining, I was not excited to have this $400. And you know, once you get the pin in there and the shipping and the, all of that stuff, I mean, it's a pretty steep little price point. I was not excited to have this out in the rain and you know, I didn't plan to be out in the rain. So there are just times when water happens, right? And having a $400 writing tablet that can't take a little bit of water isn't necessarily the best thing. So um, it is not waterproof. That to me, that is the biggest detractor of this thing. I mean, it's big and bulky and it's heavy, but I knew all of that going in. That's, it's 
it's part of the design, right? It's a big device. So what else about this? Of course, it's flush on the front. It's it's all the things about the paper white, just this big. It's got the additional lights like the Oasis does. Well, it's got more of them. It's still a 300 PPI screen, which all of them are. So that's pretty stable across all of these devices, but you get a whole lot more of it with this one. And there are just some bells and whistles on this one that make it nice. And I do like it, I really like it, but it's not waterproof. And y'all, I'm clumsy. And I do things like end up standing out in the rain with all of my Kindles and it being waterproof would just be nice. So, all right, you've heard the basics. They're all 300 PPI. They're all, of course, have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of that. So let's get down to brass tacks. Who is the belle of the ball? Y'all, I feel like I, like I gotta pick which one of my children I love the most. Well, y'all, I have the most annoying, frustrating answer ever. It just depends on where I am and what I'm doing. Like if I'm sitting on the couch or I'm sitting outside and it's not raining or I can move quickly if it starts raining, I'll grab the Scribe. I love reading on this device. It's just a nice experience. And y'all have heard me talk about this. I talked about it in my Scribe video. I've mentioned it in videos that have nothing to do with the Scribe. I've mentioned it in videos that have nothing to do with Kindles. I love the fact that you can set the Scribe up in landscape mode and read in two column view, which if you haven't had a Scribe for like a good little minute, you're probably like, of course you can. Like, why would you not be able to? Because in the beginning, you couldn't. So it was just like a whole bunch of words, either portrait or landscape. And it was just whole, like, there were no columns. It was just a whole bunch of words. And my brain struggled with that. So I had trouble loving her right at first, but Amazon said, we're gonna update the software and they did. And now we have this and I love it. I will often grab, well, I will almost always grab the scribe when I'm sitting on the couch and I want to re read on an e-reader, I'll grab the scribe. Especially if it's a book in which I want to take notes and I want to highlight, I love highlighting on this thing. As a matter of fact, the other night I was doing some highlights for a book club and I wanted to, I was so tired, I wanted to go to bed. Typically I do not read on this thing in bed because it's just so big and so cumbersome. Not even typically, never. I never read on this thing in bed, but I took it to bed with me that night because I wanted to highlight on it. And it's just such a lovely experience doing that with the stylus on this big old screen. I took it with me in the bed, finished highlighting what I needed to do. And then I put it down and went to reading something else on the um, paper white that I keep in the bed. So scribe for if I'm like posted up somewhere reading, it's the scribe all day long. It's heavy. It gets heavy holding it for longer than any amount of time at all. But I'll just like, well, you can't see right now, but I have it propped up in my hands like this with my hand propped on the counter. And it's perfectly comfortable to read that way, especially with the pop sockets on the back so that I can, you know, sort of move it around and fidget while I'm reading. So sitting in one place, it's the scribe. Along those same lines, if I want a luxury read with clicky buttons, I'll grab the Oasis. And y'all, if I haven't read on this in a while and I grab it, my first thought is, oh, I forgot how much I love this device. It's another one that's just nice and it feels good in the hand. It's nice to just sit back with a device like this and that asymmetrical design. It just feels good to hold. And sometimes I just want to click some buttons. So I'll grab this one. Or like I said, I feel like this is more of sort of a cult classic, the Voyage. And sometimes I just want that. So I'll grab the Voyage sometimes. But these are more for like sitting on the couch for a luxury read. I will grab one of these three devices. Or sometimes not really all that often, but sometimes if I know that I'm not going to be like fidgeting and moving around a lot, I'll take the Oasis in the bathtub. If I know that I'm going to be like kicked back and like if my legs are really hurting and I want to soak in a, y'all I'm old, if I want to soak in an Epsom salt tub for a while because my muscles are aching, I'll grab the Oasis because it's just nicer to hold and it's waterproof so I can have it in there and you know if it's, now I'm not going to 
intentionally drop it in the drink or something. But if it gets steamy or something or gets splashed on, I'm not worried about it. So that's when I like the Oasis. Y'all know already, this is my workout reader. I keep this on the Peloton. As a matter of fact, the instant we end this conversation, I'm gonna take this back out there because I'm already a little bit anxious at the thought that I might go to get on the bike in the morning and not have a book to read because this is sitting inside. So this stays out there. I read it on the bike all the time. I, have, I even have a charger out there to plug it in out on the bike. Um, so this is my sort of like in a small place where I want to easily be able to hold it in one hand or switch hands back and forth because sometimes one hand just doesn't feel like doing any work when you're climbing up a hill. This is that device. It's light and I feel like it's rugged enough because y'all this actually not even feel like I know that it is because I cannot even tell you how many times I've dropped this thing, knocked it off the bike. Now it's not falling far, right? It's falling a couple of feet, but it's done it on more than a couple of occasions. So that's the entry level $100 Kindle. My daily driver, my, I'm sitting at the counter eating a sandwich and want an e-reader to prop up to read for a few minutes, or I'm running out the door, getting in the car, want an e-reader to take with me, or I've got errands to run, don't know how long I'm gonna be somewhere and I want something to stick in my purse. Y'all, I have too much going on here. I can't find the one that I want. That's the paper white. If I were to buy one e-reader for someone that I knew was gonna love it, and I didn't want the like $70 on sale entry level Kindle, it would be the paper white, the $140 paper white. I think that the reading experience on the paper white is nice enough and is enough of an upgrade from the read it on your bike while you're in the garage, Kendall, that it's worth the $40. Now, again, is it worth, definitely, is it worth the like $80 from the entry level Kindle to the signature edition? Probably no, I would say no, especially now that you can get the signature edition in cute colors, I would say go with that. But $140 with eight gigs of RAM, y'all, that's a bunch of books. 6.8 inch glare free screen. I'm not going to get into, I'm doing it again. I'm sorry. I'm not going to grab, I'm not going to drag us back into the details of this device, but I love it. If I were to pick just one, if I were to pick just one for myself, I would cry. But if I were to pick one to buy as a gift for someone, especially someone that I knew was a reader and someone that I knew was already in the, my mom. My sister and I bought my mom one of these for some gift giving occasion. We knew that she was already in the Amazon ecosystem. She had Kindle books and y'all go ahead and, I'm gonna drink tea for a second, let you shame me. My mom had a paper white that was from like 2007. I know, was it even a paper white? I don't know what it was. There were no paper whites back then, but it was old. It was decrepit and it was time to get her a new Kindle. So we got her the, I don't know if it was the signature edition. I think it was just the regular old like entry level paper white. And y'all, that's our mama. So this is my cream of the crop, bell of the ball. This is the one, this is the daily driver. This is the, if you're only gonna buy one or if you're buying one as a gift for someone, it's the standard edition paper white which now comes in cute colors. All right, y'all, that's it. <laughs> that's enough from me about Kindle e-reader devices. Let me know what you read on. Are you on a Kindle? Are you on a Nook? Are you on a Kobo? Tell us in the comments what your daily driver is, if you have multiple e-readers and which one you like the most. Y'all, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. If you made it this far, we're definitely friends. So go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I upload food and fitness videos the beginning of every week with some book videos sprinkled in between. See you on the next one.